Okay, for your Unit 2 lab exam, you're going to be required to identify some structures on the skeleton, the life-size skeleton, and on a partner by palpating that structure. So we're going to start by uh, showing you where those structures are um, on a person, and then we're going to show you where they would be on the skeleton. Okay, so first your partner needs to be in the anatomical position. Anatomical position is standing with your feet shoulder width apart. Your arms, your palms facing forward. Okay, and um, the first structure that you need to know is the sternal end of the clavicle. So remembering when palpating, you don't want to use the tips of your fingers. That can be uncomfortable. You don't want to poke. Uh, you don't want to press too lightly, it can tickle, and you don't want to press too hard. So the sternal end of the clavicle, uh, we know where the clavicle is, we know where the sternum is, the sternal end of the clavicle is going to be right here. Okay, and so you can even see, you can feel where it's pushing out, it's a, a structure on the clavicle. And when you're palpating that, you just want to make sure that you keep your fingers on that structure until uh, the instructor has told you that it's okay and you can move your hand. So that's the sternal end of the clavicle. Okay, next we're going to look at the scapula. So we know that the scapula is the shoulder blade, it's on the back, so I'm just going to have her turn around. Okay, and so uh, to find a lot of these structures, the best thing to do is to have them bend their elbow and put their hand behind their back. Okay, and you can just put one back there. So when she does that, you can actually see the outline of her scapula, and this is the medial border of the scapula. If you follow the medial border of the scapula all the way down, you can find the inferior angle of the scapula. So medial border, inferior angle. For the next one, you're going to put her in the anatomical position again. And to find this one, this is the spine of the scapula, and it's going to run uh, in a horizontal direction. And how I usually do that is I put the pads of my hand on top of her shoulder and I drop my thumb down. And where that thumb is directed, the direction, that's going to be where the spine of the scapula is. So right in here is the spine of the scapula. And as you work your thumb all the way up, that spine of the scapula is going to end on the flat point of the shoulder. It's still on the scapula and that is the acromion or the acromion process. So we have the spine of the scapula leading up to the acromion. Okay. The next structures for the palpation uh, exam are going to be on the, uh, on the upper extremity. And we'll start with the humerus, which is the bone in the upper arm. And the first thing you're going to want to palpate are the medial and lateral epicondyles. So note that she's in the anatomical position with the palms facing forward. And you can just take your hands down until you start to feel the bone. And when you start to feel the bone, that's where the humerus is. <laughs> Grace is making faces. It's hot out. <laughs> All right, so on the humerus, you can find the medial and lateral epicondyle by taking your hands um, down the length of the humerus until you start to feel bone. That's where the bone is starting to flare out. On the inside, that's the medial epicondyle. On the outside, that's the lateral epicondyle. Now note how much that would change if she was not in the anatomical position. It would be much harder to see what was medial and what was lateral. Very important to be in the anatomical position. Now if we move down into the lower arm, we have the radius and the ulna. The radius bone is going to be on the side of the thumb. The ulna is going to be on the side of the pinky. So there's a couple of structures that we need to be able to palpate. We'll start with the ulna, which is on the medial aspect. This is the ulna bone. And the very first thing that we can see, it's an easier one, if you bend the elbow, that point of the elbow right there, that is called the olecranon process, and it happens to be part of that ulna bone. If we follow the ulna bone down to the wrist area, there is an area on the bone that sticks out right there at the, at the distal end, and that is called the styloid process of the ulna. Now when palpating that, I will probably ask you to turn the hand all the way over when she's not in the anatomical position and point to where that is, but you can see how that is, um, that bone is sticking out right there. That's the styloid process of the ulna. The radius is on the thumb side. The structure that you have to find on the thumb side or on the radius is going to be the styloid process of the radius. 
that's going to be the distal end of the radius uh, where the bone sort of uh, pushes, sticks out there. So that right there is the styloid process of the radius. Okay, next we're going to move to the pelvic girdle and uh, we're going to look at the ilium. The iliac crest is at the very top of the iliac bone, but what we want to make sure is that you're actually on the crest itself. So you can feel on her waist and it's you can feel flesh and when you come down and you start to feel the bone, the very top of that there, the very top then is going to be the crest. Now from there, you can just drop your thumb down and you'll get right to that next structure which is called the anterior superior iliac spine. Now we're going to look at the femur. You want your, uh, you want your partner to be in the anatomical position, so her legs should be shoulder width apart. Okay? And the next one uh, on the femur, what we're going to look at is the greater trochanter. The greater trochanter on women is easier to find because of their hips. It's going to be the area that juts out the most on each side. And so uh, it's, it's straight lateral. You don't want to go anterior. You don't want to go posterior. It's going to be straight lateral. And when you think you've found it, um, you can ask your partner to put their heel down and then ask them to move their toes in and out. And you should be able to feel that greater trochanter swinging. I'll move it back up so while well, she's still doing it. Good. Okay. And then you know right when you're on that point. Also on the femur, you're going to find the medial and lateral epicondyle. So again, this is going to be towards the knee, and right where that bone starts to, <laughs> right where the bone starts to uh, flare out, you're going to have the medial epicondyle on the medial aspect and the lateral epicondyle on the lateral side. <laughs> the next bone that you want to be able to identify is the patella. The patella is the kneecap. <laughs> Some people are ticklish. Don't touch it like that. <laughs> there. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Now we're going to look at the two bones in the lower leg. We have the tibia and the fibula. The tibia is on the medial aspect of the lower leg and the fibula is on the lateral aspect. The tibia is a bigger bone and takes up most of that lower leg. The first structure we want to find is the tibial tuberosity. The tibial tuberosity is right below the kneecap on the tibia and it's that uh, projection that you can feel just anterior and just uh, inferior to that kneecap. The next structure on the tibia is all the way down at the ankle. It's the area right here that uh, juts out uh, at the very distal end of the tibia and that is called the medial malleolus. On the fibula, which is on the lateral aspect of the leg, uh, we have the lateral malleolus or fibular malleolus. So on the medial aspect, we can call that the tibial malleolus or the medial malleolus. On the outside, we have the fibular malleolus or the lateral malleolus. You got it. The last structure on the fibula can be kind of hard to find. Um, it is it's straight lateral. So this is her lateral side. You're going to be below the knee, and it's the head of the fibula. And you can feel where that is. Uh, sometimes harder to find on females than on males. And she has muscle around her legs, so it is harder to find that on her. But it's right there. So that's the head of the fibula right there. If you move too far anterior, which is what most people do, the mistake they make, they're on the tibia. That is not the head of the fibula. The head of the fibula is straight lateral. If she had jeans on, it would be pretty much lining up with the seam of her jeans. And that's the head of the fibula right there. The last structure in the lower extremity is the heel bone, and that's the calcaneus. So this is the bone right back here. You can ask her to uh, lift up her foot if you want. And it's right there. That is the calcaneus on the bottom of the foot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it.